this will reduce speeding in schools. Yes, there is a money element to it. I think we should pass the ordinance. It would generate a lot of additional revenue. You know, the focus is on the ordinance. What I've been hearing is money, money, money. This is not about safety. You guys want to sit here and say this is about safety. You're lying to yourselves. This is all about revenue. You know, you, you vote on an ordinance like this. It leaves the people to believe that it's going to be put in place. Why would you do that unless you want to do it? Oh, no. Enjoy the rest of the show. Item 7A is an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Marmite, Florida, amending the City's Code of Ordinances by amending Chapter 33, Police and Law Enforcement, Offenses and Miscellaneous Provisions, <clears throat> Article 6, Traffic Control, by enacting a new Section 33-73, entitled Speed Detection Systems in School Zones, to <clears throat> provide for purpose and intent definitions providing for the authorization to use school speed limit detection systems in a determination of safety need and the implementation of speed limit detection systems in school zones, provided for a local hearing officer to hear appeals, provided for conflicts, provided for severability, provided for complications, and providing an effective date. This order is before you for a second reading and a public hearing has been scheduled at this time. So what is the wish of the word? So do, do, we, do this public to speak first, or do we... Do you, I have you, you, you use second. Second. usually have a motion okay. and a second to get it. Can, we talk, can we talk before we make motions? In the chair. I tell you, that's fine. I'm here. Have my mic. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Commissioner. Sir. Okay. Um, I, I know we had some um, heated discussion on this at the last uh, commission meeting. Um, just for clarity, you know, this proposed ordinance is not to approve a specific company <coughs> or the fact that we're going to implement cameras. It's just putting the mechanism in place if we choose to do it down the road. Um, I did, even though I do support this, I wanted to do my due diligence and make sure that the facts and information that I have are, are accurate. And I did ask the clerk to share some news articles and studies out of Georgia, um, where this has been in effect for a couple of years, a year or so now, uh, prior to coming to Florida. Um, and I also wanted to look at um, costs for our police department because, you know, it's been said, well, let's just put officers at every school during the flashing lights, which I, I'm, I don't want these cameras to replace our, our officers. If this passes, and if down the road we do have cameras, I still think that we should have physical police officers as well. But, you know, when you look at the numbers, some of the questions that I asked, and it's funny because I had asked these questions, and Mr. Emailed, emailed me, I don't think we asked exactly the same question for there were a lot of similar ones, and it was funny because you, you sent me the email. I literally got that information in like two minutes prior to that from the chief. But I wanted to know what it would cost if we were to put one officer at every school every day, guaranteed. So the way it works right now is we've got a traffic unit that does it, but they also are, are part of the road patrol. So if there's calls, if there's things going on, they get pulled off, they got to respond to those. So it's not guaranteed that they're there every single day. Um, also, depending which school it is, a school like Morgan Elementary on 18th, there's not really an issue, maybe on Royal Palm, but that can be handled by one officer. A lot of times with Morgan Hill, it requires multiple officers. But my question was, what would it cost the city to put one officer 30 minutes before, 30 minutes after, at every public school market, not the charters and all that? And if it's all low paying officers, it'd be around $200,000. If it was more senior officers, it'd be around $300,000. So I'll split the difference and say it costs us about $250,000. That's just for the enforcement of the flashing lights. Then if they've got to go to court because someone fights it, then we've got to pay overtime if it's their day off or something of that effect. So we'd be paying overtime. Um, I asked how much money per ticket the city gives, it was kind of hard to give that answer because each, by state statute and whatnot, each violation, I guess the city nets a different amount of money, but the highest that we get is $42, but it's safe to say we don't get $42 from every ticket. Um, and then I asked how many tickets we issued all of last year, and it was 213. Um, I firmly believe and based on the studies, based on some of the news articles that I've read in other states, that this will reduce speeding in schools. Yes, there is a money element to it. 
But to me, the main thing is stopping the scooters. And the studies show that only about 7% of people will actually repeat it um, after they're ticketed you know, a, a, a couple of times. Um, so when you look at what it would cost the city, I think we only netted like, it was less than $10,000 last year in tickets, but it's, if we were to put an officer in every school, it would cost us 300000 Even if they got 10 times the tickets because they're dedicated to each one, it's not even going to come come close. We're, 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 we're losing money to enforce something. The revenue from the cameras, by statute, could be used for public safety. I think five dollars goes to the crossing guard fund. Mm -hmm. The other fifty-five or sixty dollars comes to the city for public safety use. So, to me, if you have the cameras eventually down the road, I, I do agree that we should. I think we should pass the ordinance, be poised and ready, see what other other cities do. Um, as far as how that works out, if, it, if there's challenges, and then if it's working, we're at a, in a position to to implement them. Um, but we could implement the cameras, it would stop the speeding, which to me is the most important. It would pay for our crossing guards for the year. It would generate a lot of additional revenue to do things like, if, you know what, if we want to add three officers every morning and it costs us a couple hundred grand, the cameras are going to pay for that. Same thing with adding, you know, a third person to fire engines, those sorts of things. Um, so anyways, I. You know, the focus is on the ordinance, you know, in terms of the technology and all of that. That's something that we would have to do down the road with the workshop, call these companies in. Some charge to set up and take down, some don't. Some use very old technology that could be easily challenged in court. Others have very good technology that would be difficult to challenge. Some are approved by FDOT, some aren't. You know, that's not something that we're looking at today. Um, I hope the information that you guys received was enough. Um, if it's not enough, I don't want to table the item. I would to preserve the ordinance because then I'd be on the mailing side and can call it back. But I just am curious if any of the information or if you guys got any other additional information. Vice Mayor. I also, I assume we all read the same um, uh, questions, answers, and Suggestions. I live off of Atlantic Boulevard. The speed zone, regardless of what day, time of day it is. The thought was that people who live here would understand where the, the red zones were and not do it. Where I come out of one part of my development, I have to count to four when the light changes because they're coming from Coral Springs and they race through the city. Plus, the speed limit changes. It's 45 a block from me. It's 35 where I live all the way down. Um, according to what I've read here now, and I read all the questions and stuff, our city manager has suggested one of two things. I was prepared to say absolutely I would vote for this because we were not doing anything beyond putting this together. But he has asked that either if we vote for it, we put it six months on hold to watch and see what other people are doing. And I have no problem with that. And if we table it, we only table it for six months, and both times have workshops and still watch and see what other cities are doing. To me, it's the same six of one half dozen of the other. Um, I'm fully in agreement to watch what Coconut Creek does to see what Plantation is doing, and what Sunrise <coughs> apparently is about to do. So I don't have a problem with putting it on hold, having workshops, and seeing what other cities, the good, the bad, the ugly. So, I, and I'm in agreement, would, would you be fine with passing the ordinance, but doing a six-month kind of moratorium on winning in or considering a company? This way we're poised and ready to go if we decide to make Well, I would choice. do a six-month moratorium before thinking about doing anything. That's what I'm saying. Thing. If this ordinance passes, I'm in full agreement in seeing how so, it plays out. And then if it, if it's for whatever reason, isn't a good thing, then we just don't implement it. But at least we are able to do that. I, I, if it does I'm curious to hear what everybody else has to say. But I appreciate Jim for sending all the seven pages with the questions and the responses and the amount of money and all that stuff. Commissioner Simon. My question is why do we need to be posed right? 
So later on, why do we need to be posed and ready? Oh. Because if we watch other cities and we like what they do, then we can always bring back the ordinance. We could always interview the companies and move from there. So I don't know what the rush is to push this to be posed and ready. It almost sounds like the decision from some commissioners has already been made up that they want this, and so they want to be ready to push the button to say, let's go for it. I don't see the need for it. I think we need to sit back, watch how it plays out in other cities, and then there's plenty of time for us to pass an ordinance and then do our interviews of uh, the companies and go forward from there. But right now, I'm not in favor of this ordinance, and I will vote no on it. Commissioner Sir. Um, the, the reason why I want to be poison ready is this, I don't want to say labor intensive, but there's a lot of work that will be needed to put in to do the research. And so I think that if we pass the ordinance, it gives staff the go ahead to start doing that research, start asking questions to these companies, start asking questions to other cities. If this gets voted down or tabled, then quite frankly, Kale doesn't really have the authority to see how it plays out. If this passes, he'll be able to, I mean, he can call whoever he wants, but I think we send a message that we would at least want to look into it and start getting the proper information from the other cities. Again, what's the rush? What is the rush? There's plenty of time. There will be plenty of time to let staff or Kale, if we like the way things are going with other cities, to do it. Okay. Let me say a couple things here. Joanne, I couldn't agree with you more with this. I don't know what the rush is. You know, you, you vote on an ordinance like this, it leaves the people to believe that it's going to be put in place. And I made a, an analogy to the city manager today. I said, how would you feel if we came up with an ordinance that said we want to hire another city manager to work with you? Same power, same thing. And you think about it is, why would you do that unless you want to do it? So what you guys are saying is you guys are for this. You want to get it done. Commissioner, sorry, I don't, I don't disagree with you with a lot of things, but this, I 100% disagree with you with. I listened to what you said, and the whole time you spoke, you only mentioned the word safety one time, and that was public safety using the funds from the camera. From what I've been hearing is money, money, money. It doesn't make any sense to pass this right now. Let other cities see what they're doing and bring it back. You can bring it back when we find out, see what they're doing, see if this is going to be held up in court. But to do this right now, you're just telling these people, you know what? We're going to do this. We're setting it up where we're going to do it. And you know what? You think about it. This is not about safety. This is not about children's safety in school zones. Vice Mayor, you made a comment last meeting. There's a lot of accidents that were on Atlantic. It's in the report. Yeah, but it's not during school. It's in the report. Three or four, nothing serious. Right. Okay? The, cab, the, the lights that are on Atlantic, there could definitely be more put out there to let people know. The cameras are not going to help safety. What the camera does is when kids are in school, Somebody flies down the road, two weeks later they get a ticket. How does that help the moment of safety? It doesn't. It doesn't do anything. So if you guys want to sit here and say this is about safety, you're lying to yourselves. This is all about revenue that you feel the city's going to get, and then you're going to justify by saying, let's subsidize it here, let's put it here, let's put it there. And it's wrong. And you know what? There were over 400 comments made on my Facebook. And I'd like to go back to it again. But representing the people is what you're here for. It's not about the money. Did you guys ask the police department if they're for this? Oh, well, I thought the sense. Did, did, I thought you, the did, sense you, that they are not did you read the report yes. when yes. they said it will not help yes. safety? I got the sense. You did. Yes, did you ask them whether they're for this? So now you're going to know the people don't want it, the police don't want it, but you guys want it. 
You know what? You're going to make your own bed. You lie in it. I do not agree with this. It's wrong to do. Even tabling is wrong. Bring it back when you feel that other cities are doing well. Bring it up, present it, and do something. But to, uh, to prove it tonight is totally wrong. And if you're going to do that, you're going to get the people, you're going to get your police department. And I'll leave it at that. I think you misunderstand me. I think you misunderstand me. I, I listen to no, those. Gonna be I'm not, I, but I'm not, first of all, it's not about the money because with $42, you're not making any money. It's about people flying down there from other cities. But I have no problem since I got this. And the suggestion was regardless, even if it's tabled, to set a time frame for gathering more information, hold a workshop, or evaluate program results from other cities to implement. So I don't have a problem either way. I would prefer to be on the prevailing side, whichever way it goes. So if it has to just come back, that's how you do it. But it does not bother me to wait six months to table it for that amount and watch what other people do. But it has nothing to do with $42 breaking the budget one way or the other. Um, I clearly understood, because I got to read, where the accidents were, the time of the day, and whether or not people had accidents during that period. They don't. <clears throat> And the 214 tickets, to me, is minuscule because there's 180 long. days yeah. in the school year. So that's like an average of a little bit over one a day if we do it. So I don't have a problem with tabling this. But for me, it was not about the money. To well, me, it, it's, it's funny because last month when I asked to table it, I but got accepted and I didn't and even get it. it. I didn't get the vote. So to I change your mind, I don't know why. You, you, know, you sat there and you said the accidents... The multiple accidents, which isn't true. Well, I thought it was at the time. The, it, it, there's just so many wrong things about this. I don't know how you guys can just move this along. I really don't. And to yeah, say no you want to be on the prevailing side to bring it back, then you should assume you're going to bring it back. Only if other cities find that it goes but, and stops amount of accidents. But Mayor, people you said last it. week, I'm going to wait and see what happens in Coconut Creek. Yeah. The meeting was last week. Yeah. So what happened in Coconut Creek from last week till today that you found out? Yes. That has nothing to do with Coconut Creek. No, it has nothing to do. It has not so why didn't anybody day. ask these questions prior to the Commissioner Arcevio asking them today? Him and I were the ones that were asking these questions. So you know what, if you want to sit here and make a big decision like that, maybe you should have answered, asked some of the questions. Maybe you should have asked your police department. Maybe I asked my city manager when I had my agenda. It's not his decision. It's a safety issue. That's your safety. Fire is your safety. So it's representing residents. Agree. That's the people out there. And I then you're going to hear the comments of the people coming up. You're probably not going to get two people here ever for it. I'm agreeing with you. What more do you want? I, then said, you it down. I said last time I wish there were points attached to this because otherwise it doesn't make a difference. Then I read some of the things that were sent to me that said in certain cities it's made a huge difference. I'm more than willing to watch and see what the city is surrounding us do. I don't know how much better than that to do it. I'm more than willing to table this and see in six months and hold workshops and all the things your city manager asked to do to gather more information. I don't see the problem with that. Commissioner Sir. I, I appreciate everyone's comments. Um, just for clarification, I might have only said the word public safety, but I said a couple of times the main goal was to stop speeding, which speeding causes accidents and those sorts of things. So indirectly, it, it was safety. Um, I also have met with our police. Um, when a couple of these companies approached us, I met in Kale's office with our, I, I forget the officer's name, but it was someone who oversaw uh, the traffic unit. Um, if they were not objected to it, they did have concerns, they did have questions that needed to be looked at, um, but I absolutely did my due diligence and I did meet with our police. Um, I also know that the Florida Chiefs of Police Association has approved some of the vendors, so I know that they are in support of it. Um, and, you know, as far as Facebook comments, you know, I've done posts before on medical marijuana. They got 600 comments, and most people were for it. And we didn't pass it. So I, you know, that the Facebook thing, you know, I use it too. It's a good tool, but I don't always legislate from it. Um, but it seems like 
it seems like the commission needs more information. So if it's if it's going to be tabled, let's table it. I, I hate to vote it down. You know, that's that's all I have to say. I appreciate the staff getting the comments together. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, they were very informative. I know I had asked several questions. I saw some others. So I guess it was the mayor that asked for some follow up, you know, the article. But I understand it's a, uh, it's a, I don't know if it's a hot topic. I know, yeah. mm -hmm. well, you know, I read other cities and I don't hear any negative comments about it. I'm, on Facebook, I'm involved with a lot of mom and dad groups and this and that. And parents are always complaining about speeding at schools. I mentioned this program six months ago, they were begging for it. So, um, you know, I, I don't know. Commissioner Kajan. I just think it's pretty amazing that we're sitting here justifying speeding. Uh, we're justifying people going 47 miles an hour plus on a, in a 35 during a school day. We're justifying people flying through um, school zones at over 27 miles an hour because we're talking about having it, if we were to do it, we wouldn't do it for less than 12 miles an hour over the speed limit. And I just can't believe that we're sitting here uh, protecting speeders going through school zones. It just blows my mind. Commissioner Simone. I'm, I'm looking tonight to vote this down, not uh, bring it back in six months, not table it for six months. Because I think if it's voted down, we can always bring it back at a later date. So I don't think it needs to be tabled. I think it needs to be voted down now. And then if we want to bring it back later, we can always bring it back later. There's no rule against that. I agree with you, Commissioner Sumo. And also I want to say some of the stats that were given were if we were to have a cop at each school zone, what would it cost? Right now, we do have a cop at each school zone. What Commissioner Rosario was talking about, a dedicated cop where, and I don't even know if this is true, but the person would be there and God forbid there was an emergency, they would still be there. I don't find that to be true. I think if there was an emergency somewhere else, they would have to leave. So right now, we have cops in those speed zones and in case there's an emergency, they have to leave. That happens maybe two or three times a month. And that's it. So we are covered in that aspect. And you know, Commissioner Kajami talked about sitting here debating school and speed zones. We've been here for eight years. How many times have you went to the either the traffic or the police department saying that this was a problem and you want to get it solved before, I gave my opinion. before the money issue came up? I gave my opinion. I think it was zero. You I don't think, think anybody has ever said, you know, no, hey, Chief, you think, can we put some more cops think, out there because I'm real concerned know. about the speeding? You think, so I don't, you know, don't you won't, know. You won't, you won't, and you're you won't give up the answer, so I'm going to assume you never think did. You so know. with that, I will you're just wait assuming. for a motion to be made, and we will see what happens here. Commissioner Sarah. Um, Go with this, but um, you know, while I'm getting my train of thought, you know, I've heard things like money grab before. To me, a rental registration is a money grab. To me, increasing this rate or that rate is a money grab. To say that someone going 10, 12, 15 over is a money grab, I don't think that's the proper choice of words. And I'm not, this is not a bad comment about our police because I love it. It can't be everywhere. But they only gave 213 tickets last year. That's a little over one a, one a day. Let's just give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's say they got two a day. And it's not that they're doing a bad job, all right? But they've got to do the radar, chase the person down, get their license and registration, call it into the county system, which is, you know, you know what of a mess that is. And if there's other issues, then by the time they write the ticket. So... They're doing the best job that they can, but they can only write so many tickets. I think the most they said was they've done 10 in a half hour period, but typically it's like three to five. The cameras can get a couple hundred sometimes in a day. 
So to me, it's about using the proper technology to help their job. It'll pay, yes, there's money involved in it. From people speeding, it could pay to put extra cops on the road to be at those school zones. Yes, if there's a big emergency, they would still probably have to leave. But right now, we're taking people from the road that their job is road patrol or traffic, which when I was reading some of the comments, people said, well, what about this street that aren't in school zones where they're speeding? So maybe they could be out on 441, or they could be out on Southgate, or they could be out on other roads um, enforcing traffic there because they know that the cameras, the traffic cameras in the school zone are doing what they need to do. Um, All I want to do is so I, I, But, I mean, I... <laughs> To, to vote this down tonight, I, I'd rather pass the ordinance then, and then just do, wait six months a year and see what happens. All right, again, Antonio, just, uh, you, you brought up the tickets because the tickets aren't, there are only 200 something tickets. If you go back and look at the accidents that occurred with children in school zones in the last year, I don't know how many there were, but there was yeah. one that I know of. Okay. I think in a school zone, where they were driving under 15 miles per hour. And it's just the awareness wasn't there. Why the person hit the kid on the bicycle, I don't know why. So I just think it's it's not about the tickets, it's making people aware they're in a school zone. And to me, it's not about the speeding issue. I understand speeding, you get hit at 30 miles an hour, you get hit at 40 miles an hour. I don't know what the difference is, but to me, it's more about safety in our school zones. It's not about the giving of tickets and stuff like that. Because our cops being out there as a presence, you're going to slow down. So I think if we had more cameras and more uh, lights, um, if the cops aren't busy in the morning, put a couple extra out there. But to me, this is not the answer. It's just, it's really not the answer. If they wanted to come up with something that had teeth, put this on 441, put it on a local hot, put it on a main highway. But you know what? They won't do that because too many will people complain about it. And the people up in Tallahassee won't get their jobs back. So this is not. A good idea. I agree with Commissioner Simone. Make a motion. We vote on it. We vote it down. It comes back. There's problems in those cities. We, we deal with them. But this, I don't, it's too premature. Commissioner Sir. Oh, sorry. No. Okay, so because there's not a motion out there, one will be. Well, if there is, then the public can speak on it. So. I thought I made a motion. Mm -hmm. I, haven't I haven't heard of it. No, I haven't heard of it. No. I'm going to make a motion. To approve. Okay, is there a second? I'll, I'll second it. Okay. All right. All right. All right. You guys, we, we've heard up here, you guys can always chime in after the resume, after whatever you guys want. So now we're going to open up the public. Ready? Okay. First off, my opinion is my own opinion, and it doesn't necessarily reflect any candidate's opinion. It's my own opinion. Um, you know, when you advertise this as a money grant, I'm not surprised that there is an overwhelming re emotional response on Facebook. But it's not a money grab. It's justice. When people are speeding, that's not a money grab. So I completely disagree with that characterization. And that's why you get that response, because you create an emotional fervor about it that's not justified. If they're speeding in the school zone that's, and they get a ticket, that's justice. And it will change behavior. Um, I'm not happy, and, and, and we have to recognize that the camera providers have identified a big problem. They have shown us that there is a lot of speeding. So regardless of how the vote goes tonight, you shouldn't want to leave this commission hall unless you come up with a permanent solution. The camera may just well be that permanent solution. But just to say, no, let's not have the camera. And by the way, Commissioner Simone, what's the sense of urgency? The sense of urgency is in the studies that the camera providers have sent to us. And by the way, it's a shame that it's not put as a backup on this so that the rest of the residents can see all of the data that's involved, that we do have a speeding problem in school zones. And if the status quo of what's being done now is so good, then why do we have the speeding problem? Do not leave this commission hall tonight unless you provide a permanent solution, whichever way it is. Now, I disagree with the signs that we currently have. We have signs that are overhead. If you're watching traffic, if you're watching cars, 
and you're trying to stay out of an accident and you have your sun visor down because we're in Florida, you can't see that flashing one flashing yellow sign that's way overhead. We need to have road signs with much larger flashing yellow signs so that people notice. I believe that most people don't want to go and speed in the school zone, but they don't see it. It's our job to help them see that, and we need to have more signage in order to do that. And when we talk about this as a money grab for residents, guess what? Residents know where our school zones are. This is not going to punish residents. This is going to punish the outsiders who don't care about our city, who speed anyway, who don't know where our school zones are. So don't feel bad for those who get ticketed. And by the way, when they get ticketed, it's a $100 fine. I heard comments about they're going to hire attorneys. You're going to hire an attorney for $200 to go fight for $100 you're good, ticket? Rich. You're good, Rich. Rich, you know you, you, know you brought up a speeding. This isn't a You're done, so you can sit down. Well, <laughs> not if you talk it's, to me. I want to answer back. Yeah, you can't. I'm going to just reference to what you said, speeding. Again, you mentioned safety. You can get hit in a car, crossing a sidewalk, doing 15 miles per hour. It's pretty well understood. And you know what? That's the problem. So it's when you say this well isn't... Rich, you're done, Rich. You're done. You're done. You're done. You're done. When you say this you isn't a money grab, grab, you don't want me to answer This is a true money grab, Rich. And you got a new friend on the end over there. Maybe you guys can go out and it. It's just... All right, next. <laughs> I'm glad I did one thing and make you guys friends. Yeah, Tracy. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> um, first of all, I mean, how many times has the city manager not given you all of the information you needed? Ms. Schwartz. I got this today. Okay, please. Okay. Um, second of all, Margate Middle, I, I live off Southgate, so I drive Atlanta quite often, and Margate Middle in the morning has sometimes two to three police officers there, and I've seen them have four to five people pulled over at a time. They do a damn good job of their, what they're doing. So I don't know why you guys are saying there might be one officer there. There might not be. They're doing a damn good job. 213 tickets or not, they're doing their job. So leave them alone and let them do their job. Um, who is benefiting from this? Because it sure is not going to be the residents and it is not going to be the police. You have a sign up on Facebook, you're hiring police. Are you going to hire police if you get these cameras up? Because it seems to me like you're trying to replace the police and not have to hire more police. And um, I, I agree, we need more signs. You go to 66, if you're coming out of 66 and you turn, there's no sign there telling you that you're in a school zone. There should be a, a sign right there before you turn that says school zone from such and such time, 15 miles an hour. People don't know that. They're not going to see the light that's blinking back by Starbucks. And I was just on uh, 81st, a red and, blue, red and blue flashing light. It cleared down almost to McNabb, but when I turned on to 81st from Southgate, my granddaughter's like, ooh, somebody got in trouble. We get all the way down there, and it's blue and red flashing lights with a speedometer thing. Here she thought it was police officers. All it was was a light. Tricked her. So why can't we get some of those around the city? And how much out of pocket is this going to cost the city? Nothing at all. I'm saying not a dime. Well, I'll believe that when I see it. I say put more officers. Let's get some of these re these ones coming out of the academy and give them a real job. Why are we going to put cameras up so that people can go and they can say in court, well, you know, when was the last time the camera was checked? Just like the radars. When was the last time a radar was calibrated? You can fight those. But an officer standing there, you can't fight. They have to be present in order for a, a ticket to stay. And what are you going to do? It's not just the speeders. It's these people that are on their phones texting, not paying attention. That's where we need our safety. Not in these speed zones. And because they're not paying attention to the road, they're not paying attention to their speed. 
And that's where we need it. That's the ones that are getting the kids hit by a car. The ones that are texting and driving. Florida needs to go totally <coughs> hands-free. You can't do either. Talk on a phone or text. I know I had a friend just killed from a text person texting. And it's not fun. But we need to put more officers. Let's get our service aids out from where the bank used to be under the trees and out on our roads working. They're sitting there having their powwows over there. They were there again today about 1230. Having their powwows. Let's get them out on the roads. Get them working. Because this is crazy. And we don't need these lights. What's going to happen when we have a hurricane day? That the kids are out of school. But the lights are flashing. Because nobody set it up. Here goes the camera. But really, there's no school zone. There's no school in, in progress. But I'm going to have to pay a ticket if I'm doing my regular speed limit. Because nobody's there to shut the camera off. So, put police out there and let them do their job like they always do. Thank you. Margaret Resident, strategic to have the schedule for July 3rd. You're doing this in reverse. Instead of first having the need to create ordinance, you met with the for-profit speed camera vendors and allowed them to provide you the data to convince you to pass this ordinance instead of the other way around with the city first finding the, the, the need for an ordinance and then after that find a way to enforce it. The cameras only penalize law-abiding drivers who legally display unobstructed registered license plates on vehicles, all while vehicles with either no plate, intentionally covered or altered, avoid being captured by cameras to get a free pass to speed through school zones unchecked. You'll begin to be part of the problem that law enforcement faces with covered and altered license plates and can expect to see more in an attempt to hide from these speed cameras. Last meeting, Commissioner Arcero said the police department did their own studies. Well, where were those studies? Well, I contacted the commissioner, and he provided me the numbers given by the police department. And for the entirety of last school year, the police department issued a total of 213 school zone speed and tickets. While the speed camera vendor's own study claims over 1,000 school zone tickets can be issued in just one week in front of Margate Middle during school zone time. Many more can be ticketed during non-school zone times in the middle of the day while kids are in class, estimated to be 19,000 during non-school zone hours just for one school. And Atlantic West can potentially issue 3,700 tickets a week during school zone times and 13,000 during non-school zone times. These numbers do not add up with our police department's numbers with only 213 school zone tickets issued citywide. This number shows there's not much of a problem with speeding in school zones as some would want you to believe. The largest amount of speeding occurs during non-school zone time, while students are in class. And according to the vendor study, in upwards of six times as much when compared to school zone time. Supporting the fact that there's not a problem with speeding in school zones, our police have it under control. Our city actually gets more money per ticket from current school zone tickets on average of $42 per ticket, while these camera tickets will only bring in about 30. This ordinance is being motivated by greed, as many more tickets can be issued than what our police can ever do. The city's data shows zero accidents at 66 in Atlantic during school zone times last year, different than what the vice mayor asserted last meeting, and an actual need for these cameras was never demonstrated as the city numbers don't show it. These $100 tickets will be an extra toll for those willing to pay it to get where they're going faster. And at midnight, it will be July 4th, and people can start legally lighting fireworks, but should they? Just because you could do something does not mean you should. It's overreach. Vote no. Um, okay, President. Well, I I have read about it and I have uh, gone online and checked about it and I have thought of what Mayor had said. If you, uh, if somebody gets a ticket, if somebody the camera gets a ticket, they don't get the ticket for two weeks. In the meantime, you still have people going there passing and, and speeding. So what is the point of the cameras? I think if you have, if you can make sure that there's a police officer there all the time, and that police officer cannot be pulled to, to go somewhere else, I think that will be the, the reason, that will be the, 
a solution to, to it. And yes, definitely more lights and more warnings, but I don't think the cameras are going to help in, in any way. Uh, because they're, they're not going to be done immediately when the person is speeding. It's going to be done later. So in the meantime, there's time is going by, and they don't care. They, and then they might go and fight it. So I think that the solution would be for a police officer to be put in there and not moved from there, and for more lights to be a uh, warning for the people that are driving through. And if they're coming from other cities and they're speeding through, well, they will learn the lesson at the moment, not two weeks later. Thank you. I wasn't going to speak, but I was listening to everything that was going on. Um, I did my own research, and I, I don't think that cameras are the answer. Um, many times I've gotten up and spoke about the speeding on Margate Boulevard, and that is an absolute horror. Um, no, it is not a student zone. I know that that's what we're speaking about. Um, but I think that the safety of all of the residents of Margate um, the last time I had brought this up, I had heard that the police were going to increase their presence and there was some new programs that um, they were going to go after the speeders. Um, I'm hoping that it will extend to the school zone. I'm hoping it's going to extend on Margate Boulevard. Um, I was out canvassing, and so many residents were talking about speeding. So the, the cameras, um, I agree with what Elsa and others have said, um, getting it a couple of weeks later, no, they need to be stopped now. And, uh, you know, this, this was a big thing. Um, when I was walking the streets, the residents are concerned about the speeding period, not only the school zones, Margate Boulevard, the seniors, um, I, everybody, but on Margate Boulevard, where all of the uh, senior communities are, this is really frightening. So I think that the increased police presence um, to have to wait uh, a few weeks or whatever the case is, I don't think that that is the answer. Thank you. Thank you. Um, first, I feel that with the cameras, they were total waste because they are not about safety. If you are speeding through a school zone or speeding, you normally get a ticket. That's over $500. I had to research it because I didn't have one, so that's good for me. But also, you also get points taken off. So if you're not getting a hefty fine or points taken off, how is that going to help safety? Because they're just going to laugh at the ticket. Market's just going to collect their $42, and they're still going to be speeding. I understand it's not for the Margate residents. The Margate residents will not. It's for the people outside Margate. But they're going to get their ticket a couple of weeks later. And they're going to pay the hundred dollars, and then they're going to go speeding through again. But it's only a hundred dollars, mm -hmm. so it needs to be five hundred and fifty-five dollars if you're doing like thirty miles over the speed limit, and you need to get your points taken off. That's not going to save our kids. It's not going to save anybody. It's not going to help safety. The police need to be out there. When I would take my kids to school, I would see more police officers ticketing people than a camera would. They will follow them, they will stop them, they will pull them aside. And that's including parents that are illegally dropping off their kids when they're not supposed to be doing that in the middle of the street. So if you have a police officer out there, that police officer will see this happening. But the camera won't, because the camera is only pointed 
in certain directions. And from what I understand about those cameras and doing my research, is that those cameras cause a lot more of your rear crash accidents, not the ones that are head on. And there was some technical stuff about that as well. But that's not the way to go. At least that's the way I feel, but it's not the way to go. And I would not do it, and I hope that you don't, but thank you for listening. Thank you. I had a, Mayor, if I may, a couple, yeah, not, not to her directly, but, you know, I think this is just people need to be educated on the law and how these cameras work and what they can and can't do. You can't charge more than $100. It's a state law. It, it can't be on 441 because it has to be in a school zone. I heard a bunch of people talk about signs. There has to be a certain amount of signage for these cameras to go in. So it's not like they're going to put a camera up and try to trick you with with a little sign. Mm -hmm. and, I, and the last person that Mrs. Bond says, well, they'll just laugh at the ticket and pay the $100. Last time I checked, that's still a lot of money these days. You know, we've in the past <clears throat> talked about raising the fire fee 25 bucks for the year, how many cents a day? And people were coming in here crying, crowds waiting out of the thing over a $25 increase for the year. It says they get a $100 ticket, it might be a two week delay. But I'm telling you, based on the numbers and the studies, they're not going to do it again. So $100 is a lot of money, and I doubt people are just going to laugh at it. All right. Just want to make a closing statement real quick. The speed limit on the Atlantic is 35 miles per hour. And isn't it ironic how you could, and, and I don't know if this is, you, you have to set the, the cameras at over 10 miles per hour? Correct. Yeah. So let's figure this out. The speed limit is 35 miles per hour, but the cameras have to be set at 10 miles per hour over. So if this is a safety thing involved, involving speed, you're basically saying speed it doesn't really matter because you're supposed to be doing 35. So if you're doing 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, it's okay. If you get that 45, you're going to get a ticket. This is probably the biggest money grab you could ever find that the representatives up in Tallahassee put together to try to commingle school safety and money making. And I'll tell you what, you look at these red light camera companies, watch how much money is going to Tallahassee. I guarantee you. This is wrong, and to rush it through is wrong. So I guess Chief, if somebody's driving down, Atlantic Boulevard doing 44 miles an hour, they could say, well, it's okay, because the camera says it's okay. You know, it's wrong. It's not about speeding, it's not about safety. So just remember that when you live. The, the mileage is set because it's, one, not to mend, to be a gotcha. Yeah. And I'll admit, and it's public, I, I've gotten speeding tickets, it's been about 10 years, but back in the day, I've gotten plenty. I don't even think the fines start until you get the five miles an hour over. And I know speeding, speeding, and I've known many cops, most of them are not going to pull you over for going five, six, seven miles an hour over, unless you're doing other things, and that's the reason for the stop. So it's the same thing. If our police are out there and someone's going two, three miles an hour over, they're not going to pull them over and give it to you. I'm going to say that. Maybe a state trooper would. <laughs> Okay, all right. If there's no other comments up here, no comments down below. Oh, no. Commissioner Caggiano? Yes, this is on the motion to approve the ordinance on second read. Commissioner Simone? No. Commissioner Serio? Yes. Vice Mayor Schwartz? No. Mayor Rosano? <laughs> oh, no. I'm going to do what the city manager has suggested yeah. for six months. Because he asked us to. He asked you to do this. He, he asked, asked you to do this. She's allowed to do what she wants. He makes his suggestions. She's allowed to do what she wants. You're trying to bully people to do what you want them to do. Oh, you're going to think about bringing it back? Oh, my God. I do know. Just relax. So I'm going to make a motion to bring it back. There's a reason you're bringing it back. You go to know on something, but yet you're going to bring it back. You're going to get your motion. You're not snowing It's safe to say right now on social media, it didn't pass by a vote of three to two. However, a commissioner brought it back to reconsider. It's safe to say. You're a vote. People don't get what they want and sit on the end, sitting there crying, and make faces and throw their hands up. 
Those are the people you gotta watch out. Stop bullying them. I'm making a motion to reconsider. We don't know a damn thing. We don't have a clue about anything. This is not about money. I saw a cop on the side of the road pull someone over. I'd go faster because I know that they're not gonna pull me over. They are a business. This is a money maker for them as well. We don't have an issue speeding in our school zones. We don't have money. That's why we're up here and you're not. Against me, you can sit up here. Can you let can you let the lady speak? Let them speak. I'm speaking, sir. Relax. Pending is a motion to reconsider. I don't know why you did this.